What's up guys? Hope everyone's doing well out there, having a nice day. Today I will be showing you how to replace your hub bearings and rotors on the front of your E30. This is a 1990 BMW 325i. Uh, I'm working on the bumper right now, but uh, this is my car team, Team Synergy. Check us out. Coming up. Um, yeah, got a lot done to it. But uh, that's not the point of this video. Today, I replaced my bearing right here. As you can see, um, literally, look at that. So, I quit driving my car until I was able to get a day off to do this because I was scared my wheel was going to fall off or some shit. Obviously, that's not what you want. Um, these have an undisclosed amount of miles on them, upwards of 200k. Um, I picked up some nice mile bearings from FCP Euro. I forget how much these were. I believe 100 bucks for the pair of them. Made and might have been a little bit more, but uh, those are some nice bearings. I also bought myself the set screws for the rotors because they say you're not supposed to reuse those. Uh, so I got some new ones, and then I picked up these drilled rotors, pretty nice. And uh, so, yeah, obviously, my old ones are out, so I've done this side already, but I'll be showing you how to do the other side. Um, this is what I used, just a ratchet, uh, here's your torque, torque wrench, torque shit down, smaller ratchet, um, might not need that, I forget, and then used a screwdriver or something similar, you'll see why, hammer, vice grips, if you have them, are very good. Um, just a good thing to have. I always use them. And then I rented a puller from Napa. And it was actually broken when they rented it to me. Right there you can see. So I had to flip the little teeth around in order to use it. But uh, it worked out alright. And then I used something like this to actually make that a little bit longer like that so that I could get the bearing all the way out. And then of course, the infamous 36 mil socket. Focus in on that. Anyways, I got this at AutoZone. Yes, you do need one of these. You probably don't have one, so you're gonna probably have to buy one. But uh, yeah, let's get started. You also need some degreaser. So I actually have a stud conversion done so I'll be using a 19 mil for mine, but the OEM lug bolts are 17 mil. So that's what you will probably need. But I suggest doing this upgrade anyways because it just makes taking the wheel on, on and off a lot easier. And they're also stronger. I had a lot of lug bolts break and snap and all that fun stuff, so. I'm actually going to go ahead and use my torque wrench, take my lugs off. I forgot how tight I put them on. So I'm going to tighten this down, tighten down, on loosen. Crack these babies loose. The wheel is touching the ground right now. Two, three, and four. I'm gonna go up. It's plenty. Take our 19 mil off, or 17 if you're OEM. Ah. One moment. Really, while I'm making this video, I know there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to do your hub bearings, but uh, from the ones I saw, they kind of made it more complicated than it really is. So, I'm just going to give you 
an idea of how I did it. It was really smooth and easy. Didn't really have any problems, so. And there's a couple few fewer steps than what I saw, so. I'm gonna take these off and I'll get back with you. Got the wheel off. I'm gonna take off my 10 mil spacer. Swing. Next to come off is the caliper. That's a 19 mil. There's two bolts. One right there. And then one down below it. So in another video, people were taking the caliper off of the caliper bracket. And it's really, it's just an extra step that you don't have to do. So this is the quick way and easy way. Hopefully you guys can see this, but just crack them loose, one down below, it helps to wiggle your caliper a little bit like this, find that happy spot and you can just twist them out real easy. Boom. bolts out. Now you take your second bolt after you pry off the caliper which we're gonna have to do. Run over here grab my flathead screwdriver give it a pry I'll be back. Once your caliper is over your wear edge right here, man, this side is bad. Worse than the other side. Anyways, you're going to take your bolt that you just took out and we're just gonna hook it right here. That's what it's there for. So no taking your caliper apart, not necessary. Just leave all that tightened up where it is. I'm gonna go like this. And then stick the bolt through right there. Just like that. Now we can take our rotor off. I believe this is a 5 mil Allen, maybe 6. Uh, crack that loose. So since I have studs, uh, it didn't fall off, but once you take this bolt out, your caliper is going to want to drop off, so make sure you're hanging on to it. Next step is taking our dust cap off. Oh, okay. Dust cap is off. Uh, save that. And now we're at this guy. So what you need is a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna be on this pin and pry it this way um, and get this big old nut off. So this is where the hammer comes into play. We're gonna take our flathead and try to make as much contact, sorry, try to make as much contact with that as you can while you're tapping on it. Because if you go like this, you could split it. And uh, if you're cheap like me, you want to reuse the nut. So, uh, yeah. So I was just tapping on this for a good minute. What I'm going to do to try and get it out is open up this area right here and right here and see if we can get our little tab to come out a little bit. So I'm still having trouble. I'm gonna switch screwdrivers to something that actually fits right there. <laughs> Screwdriver wasn't working. Brought out my pocket knife. Let's see if we can get this out. Don't stab yourself or anything else if you can. Hmm. This ain't uh this ain't working out, guys. Not working out. Okay, so I'm gonna try. Hmm. Oh man. Yeah, this is kinda fucked up, guys. Not gonna lie. 
I think I almost got it. We have a little bit of gap there now. So uh, let me go ahead and finish this off. I think maybe I got it far enough peeled back. It actually started going the wrong way, so I'm just gonna take my studs out and then uh, try to crack it loose with that 36 mil. Here's a trick when you're removing studs. Get your foot pound bar, your uh, torque wrench, I mean. Stick it in there, get your owl in, and we're gonna do the other ones first. I will hold them while you crack them loose because obviously my caliper is over there and there's no wheel to set on the ground, so that's how you gotta do it. Unless you have super strong hands or some crazy shit. And then for the final one, since there's not two studs to hold this in anymore, get your screwdriver, stick it through the hub, and right into there where the caliper mounts up. Crack it loose. Easy money. Now I have hella Loctite in here, so that's why they're so tight, but better tight than loose. go. It's going to organize my tools. So now we're ready to take our axle nut slash spindle nut off. Once again, it's a 36 millimeter. Um, I got mine at AutoZone. You may not have that luck. I just got lucky today. So let's go grab that. Come back here, get our torque wrench. I don't have a breaker bar, so this is gonna have to work. Stick it on there. Don't do that. There we go. So, in the other videos I saw, this guy was taking his wheel on and off, or putting the car up and down in order to get this off. I don't know if he even tried to do it without all that shit, but there's nothing to spin on the back side. So this is a solid axle right here. So you can stand on this as much force as you want and you'll be fine. So I just put my full weight and then some, and now she is loose. And it looks like I broke that, unfortunately. Um, there may still be enough to use on there, but uh, we'll have to see. So now our nut is off, our studs are out, and this bearing I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe turn your volume up. But you can hear it going rain, rain, rain. So that that should be silent. So that's why uh, we need some new ones. I was having a ton of vibration. The other side, I literally go like this and the whole thing was wiggling. Um, so that's not what you want at all. You want good bearings in there. So uh, here we are. Next, take your puller. And this is a quarter drive quarter inch drive extension. I'm going to put it like that. Oops, like that. Take our puller. Line it up. Come on. Line it up like that, right in there. Get it hooked on and start pulling. And by the way, the reason I'm putting this in here is there's not enough threads on this puller to actually pull the hub off. So this was completely maxed out and it wasn't even pulling on it yet. So uh, you might have a bigger puller and this step is probably unnecessary, but for me, here's what I'm doing. Now the puller's on. I'm gonna take my 13 mil socket and my ratchet. Need two hands for this, but just gonna pull the hub right off. Easy. So, Pulled the hub off in about five seconds, and it just completely disintegrated. 
so glad I'm replacing these. I've been driving around on these since I got the car. Um, and, ah yes, our inner race is stuck on the spindle. So, get your puller once again and pull off that inner race. So this puller is too fat on the teeth to actually fit between the inner race and our dust guard here. So you're a, you may have to get creative if your race is stuck on there. I have one of the teeth on there and I'm gonna try to tighten it down and see if it'll pop loose. So I just took off the dust guard. Um, grab your degreaser. Now you may not need to even take this off, but since it's off, I'm just going to spray it. Let that sit for a sec. And then, here's our uh, wheel speed sensor slash ABS sensor. Give that a squirt. Get your rag. It's a bit cleaner. Now, this fucking bearing. How are we gonna get this off? Um, I've already bent this thing, which probably is not good. Anyways, um, let me think about this for a second. I'll get back to you guys. So, with two of the teeth, I completely fucked up this and got two teeth in here to grab on and I did see it move so I'm gonna pull it the rest of the way off that seemed to work um, if you can buy a puller with a shorter distance between the race and right there so that it actually fits because I don't know what I'm gonna do about our dust guard here um, I guess I can try to fix it um, I don't want to replace it so Guys, I just remembered something I saw. So, in another video, the guy used his channel locks to get off this inner race. That's what we're gonna try right now. Oh. Grab your big blues. Size them down. Oh, a little too much. Oh, you see that? I hope you guys saw that. Okay. I leveraged between right here and right there and popped it off like that. Or so I thought. We're going to do that again. One sec. Hammer. Oh. So we just gotta get over the little edge, I guess. Success. France. Now, take your degreaser. Clean off your fuzz. Now, that dust guard is not circular anymore, so we're going to try to reshape it with a little tappity tap of the hammer. Um, so right there, I bent it out. It looks pretty good. Bottom is super bad. Excuse me. Uh, right there. Uh, 
Sorry about the camera. I'm bad at filming. Aw, oh, fuck. See, I just bent it in too much right there, so... Um, take your screwdriver, maybe. Ow! Don't do that. That's better. So, it's pretty circular now. I think it should be good enough. I'm not sure what the significance of this is, but it gets filled with grease anyways. That's the next step. And brakes, bearings, chassis, all that good shit. Get a good glob. Okay, so we have a greased spindle, and now um, the hub is ready to be pressed on. So how that's going to go is I'm going to finish cleaning my hand off and come right back. So grab your new hub, stick just the end on, make sure you're all centered up right here, and then we got to take our block of wood this way and our sledgehammer and or regular hammer and gently tap make sure it doesn't get all cattywampus on us um, and once that's on just a little bit we're going to take our socket and make sure oh clean it off first and then we're going to press or rather uh, hit the inner outer race onto the spindle and you'll be done so after you tap the hub on, um, it may or may not feel right. We're just gonna send it, get your nut, and this is how you press it in the rest of the way, it's just with the nut. So I'm gonna finger tight it on here. Okay. Take your breaker bar. Now, these are 230 foot-pounds. However, mine only goes up to 150, so I'm gonna max it out, and then I'm simply going to match up this with this, and that way I know the nut is on back to where it was when I took it off. So you may have noticed, but I completely fucked up. Um, I forgot to put this on, so I had to pull the new hub back off. The inner race came apart, but um, not, no bearings fell out or anything, and I just pressed it back in and it feels okay. So let's try this again. Grab your socket, make sure it's clean. Now when you're doing this, I'm not going to do it while filming. Use two hands. Make sure this is nice and flat. And straight and gent tap. Sorry. Gently tap until you have some resistance at the back. And then we're going to use our nut, torque it down, and then we'll be done. So I just tapped the hub in pretty tight, but I think that's okay. The other side was kind of tight too. Um, so we're gonna torque it down and test drive it and hope I didn't fuck anything up. As you can see, our tab is just about lined up again. So we're gonna get our screwdriver and go to Pound Town, get that back in there. Okay guys, I just bent that the best I could. Uh, I don't think it's going to come off. <laughs> oh, now what's next? Oh yes, the rotor. Actually, since we're mating two new surfaces, I'm going to get some of this grease here and just apply a thin layer to the areas that we'll be touching. Just to prevent any corrosion. We don't want them to seize together, 
because that's annoying and this won't hurt anything. Just a thin layer like so. Boom. Now we're gonna grab our Allen. Make sure this guy's tight. Gucci. Gucci down to the zips like a biggie papa. Um, now. Dust, dust that off. As you can see, I did not grease this before. I'm going to grease it now. Another thing that's nice about the grease is it kind of sticks your parts together so you can take your hands off it and do what you got to do. Ah, nice. Nice! All right. Now the caliper goes back on. So now that we have a brand new rotor, this is going to be thicker than our old one. So what we have to do is get this off of the hook first. So to get your caliper to fit back on, you're going to take your channel locks and open them up wide and we're just going to place them between right here and our brake pad and we're going to squeeze. Now if you don't have these, what you can do is take the cap off of your brake fluid reservoir and simply uh, with the pads almost on there you can get a screwdriver and just pry that and pry that in a little bit and taking the cap off will allow the fluid to kind of move around um, and these will be wider and they'll fit so if you guys have studs make sure you always use thread lock red high strength uh, you do not want these coming out or coming loose that's annoying and kind of defeats the point of switching to them from your lug bolts so uh, like I just did don't do that get your get a nice little glob on the end like that that's plenty actually Boom, and I'm gonna do the rest. And of course, we gotta tighten these down with the Allen. Five or six mil, I forget. I think it's a five mil. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I just have my spacer and my hub-centric ring. Oh, spacer's already on there. So, aha, our dust cap. Make sure it's cleanish. Perfecto. And I think we're done here, guys. I'm gonna put the wheel back on, lower it down, and we're gonna see how she drives. All right, guys, wheel is on. Those are just hand tight right now. Gonna go ahead and lower it down. Now, always remember to torque your lugs. You do not want your wheel falling off, I promise. So, BMW wheels call for, I think it's 75 or 80 foot pounds. I just go to 90 just to be safe. So, I just go a little bit until they feel snug on each one. And then we come back 
and go for the torque. So once again, I'm at 90 foot-pounds. Trying not to scratch my wheels while I do this. And always double check the first one. Good to go, guys. That is how you replace your hubs, front hubs, and rotors. Oh. Interior porn. Haven't done the back seat yet. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys a little cold start. Test drive it. I'll be back. So my phone died before I could uh, give a summary, but the car drove nice. The steering is way tighter, um, less less play in the wheels. Um, it feels good around corners. Um, yeah, I guess next I. I already did the other side, but I have to replace this wheel bearing in the back. My uh, axle bolt was actually stripped, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get that out. I think we have a plan, but um, let me know if you guys want to see more videos. This is kind of my first one. Uh, I've got more plans for this car. Show car with Team Synergy. We're coming up. Watch your back. Might just pull on you. Nah, not in this car. This car's slow. Slow beamer. Anyways. Uh, hope that helped you guys out. Uh, comment what you guys want to see next. And uh, I'll see you later. Peace.